Plasma torpedoes are one of the most feared and destructive weapons in Star Trek. Plasma weapons in general are used throughout sci-fi. This video will break down the nature of plasma torpedoes and their tactical application. First, the infamous physics question that must be asked and has become kind of cliche. So what is plasma? Now most of you nerds already know, but let's go over it again anyway for the few of you who don't know, and maybe some of you don't know everything. In physics, there are four states of matter, solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. Plasma is a form of ionized supercharged gas. So what's an ion? An ion is an atom that has its electron count kind of off. The electrons in these atoms may have been completely stripped away and in a plasma, the electrons are freely gallivanting about the gaseous medium. Plasma can be the hottest substance we know of in the physical universe. It is the stuff that lightning and stars are made out of. Today, science and technology is learning more and more about the use of plasma. Plasma can be benign and just for show, or it can be charged to the point where it will create a nuclear fusion reaction, the same kind of reaction that is the power source for stars. Some of the most promising fusion reactor designs in development today use plasma to achieve fusion ignition. The great thing about plasma is that it can be contained, shaped, or manipulated with magnetic fields. In Star Trek and other science fiction, plasma has many practical applications from space propulsion to weapons. The Romulans, the implacable foe of the Federation and competitors with the Klingons, were masters of these plasma weapons. In most Star Trek games or beta canon, Romulans liberally use plasma torpedoes. Some Romulan ships are designed around the plasma torpedo launcher, like the original Bird of Prey from the old series Star Trek. I believe that on my favorite Romulan ship, this Winged Defender class cruiser, these two large weapons are plasma torpedo launchers. The inner chamber of the plasma weapon is filled with ionized gas and charged creating a plasma. The plasma is contained with electromagnetic fields. The plasma ball is accelerated from the weapon and contained in an electromagnetic bubble as it flies through space. This weapon has no physical mechanism like a photon torpedo. It is guided by a low powered tractor beams on the firing ship. When the torpedo hits, the containment field collapses and the plasma envelops the target. In Alpha Cannon, the plasma is said to then collapse onto the target and release even more destruction. At least this collapsing feature is what I've read about. Now Starship Crews, this is where I could use your help in the comments. I've read that the EM force of atoms is what keeps the electrons separate from the nucleus of atoms in tension with the opposing gravitational force which is what keeps the electrons orbiting the nucleus. But with the sudden removal of this EM field, this leaves a gravitational force, which could cause a sudden collapse of the electrons back to the standard orbit, and possibly a huge release of energy, or even maybe a more catastrophic collapse to the subatomic structure. Also, it's possible that when the plasma hits, there is some mechanism that causes a sharp rise in heat, and fusion ignition is achieved upon impact which would cause even more destruction. But I didn't go to school for physics, so feel free to leave a comment to correct or educate me on any of this information. Now let's run our tactical analysis on these weapons. You can compare the nature of plasma torpedoes to submarine torpedoes in naval warfare. Submarine torpedoes are slower to hit than guns or missiles, but when they do hit, they are quite devastating. This leads us to the tactical disadvantages a drawback of plasma torpedoes, like most plasma weapons, is that you need a continuous energy source to maintain the magnetic containment field, so the torpedo will begin to dissipate as soon as it leaves the firing ship. There are surely many technological tricks and advances that could extend the range of these weapons, but it is the general understanding that these weapons are limited in range. They also can be evaded and certainly outrun at warp speed. They take a long time to charge before firing, and cannot be fired in quick succession. They can be an enormous power drain when charging. And finally, since plasma is easily manipulated by EM fields, 
If the shields of the defending ship are not already capable of resisting this type of damage, it wouldn't take much to adapt the shielding to be very plasma resistant. You could probably kiss your armor or hull plating goodbye though if the shields are down. Plasma torpedoes have a number of very nice tactical advantages, however. Plasma, by nature, is a very versatile substance. The most obvious advantage is the enveloping nature of plasma, which means that it doesn't matter if your ship's shields or other defenses are facing the firing ship, the plasma will envelop and spread the damage equally in all sides of the ship. It may be highly advantageous to supplement your plasma attack with a disruptor attack against the facing shields, forcing the defending ship to focus shield protection in the attacker's direction, but when the plasma torpedo hits, it will easily find its way into the less shielded parts of the target. Also, there is no reason why a single plasma torpedo cannot be split up and fired in a spread. This firing mode is one of the options available in the Starfleet Battles games and the Starfleet Command computer games. And finally, unlike photon torpedoes, there is no blast effect like you'd see from a matter-antimatter -matter reaction, and therefore no danger to the firing ship when using these weapons at close range. Of course a torpedo, and for that matter plasma weapons in general, is only one use of plasma. Plasma itself has many applications such as power generation, propulsion, shielding, power distribution, and possibly even computer circuitry in a plasma form. Well that's all I have for plasma torpedoes. If you want to know more about the Winged Defender or the Shannon class ships I used in this video, they will be linked in the description below. If you like this content, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. I don't upload videos every day, but when I do produce a video, I'll put my heart into it. If you really like this content, consider becoming a patron on Patreon at patreon.com resurrected, which will help support the creation of more and higher quality videos. The link is also in the description. And special thanks to new Patreon crewmate, Stephen Craig. Thanks for watching, Starship Crews. See you next time.